And my sincere gratitude and uh, warm uh, regards to uh, Ms. Lisa Carter and Mr. Rasmus. So thank you for coming all the way from UK. Thank you so much. And I'm sure uh, the session is going to be very insightful. Before uh, you know, we start uh, the presentation, I would also like to extend my thanks to our chairman, sir, Mr. Tarun Anand, Bala, sir, Dr. Kavita, and the entire management and team at uh, Universal AI University. And I would uh, love to invite our chairman, sir, Mr. Tarun Anand, just to say a few words and his views on uh, artificial intelligence. A folly to speak on a, uh, on a subject as vast as AI with the AI experts in the room. So I'm not going to even go there. Uh, the only thing we uh, I'd like to say that uh, uh, we, at a very early stage in 2018, when we were setting up this university, we felt that AI is going to drive change. Uh, we had no idea about chat GPT. We had no clue that the world would be talking about AI every second, which is happening today. And some of the ethical uh, aspects, which also needs to be safeguarded against. So at that point, we were clear that AI is going to have an impact. We put up our hands that we will have an AI-infused curriculum for all streams, whether it's liberal arts, whether it's economics, whether it's psychology, law, of course, business and future technologies. Uh, and that's how the entire AI university was set up. Uh, so we are on the uh, you know starting blocks. So it's great to have your insights on how we could possibly do things together because we believe in partnerships. We believe that's the only way to learn and grow. So welcome to uh, Universal AI University. Thank you. I feel incredibly honored to be standing here today with you uh, to talk about something that feels like preaching to a choir, really, in the sense that I truly believe that artificial intelligence is going to be the, one of the most transformative points that our youth, me and the other students in here, that we can grasp and actually use to, to change the world in a meaningful way. And I want to talk to you a bit about, uh, about artificial intelligence and how the youth is grasping this new technology. But before that, I uh, just want to give you a ooh, quick introduction about myself. So my name is Rasmus Ekvist. I am 24, 21 years old. I study at University College London in London, studying specializing in neuroscience, psychology, mathematics, and statistics. I started this uh, course in 2020 during, uh, during just COVID first hit. And it turns out when you start to study the brain and how human intelligence works, plus statistics, you actually start thinking about artificial intelligence. And that's how I really got started. I also am one of, uh, this is me with His Majesty the King of Sweden, as I this year I received an award as one of the top five leaders in my country. Um, due to my engagement in education and trying to empower students uh, to utilize their education to drive meaningful change in our society. So I have a TikTok channel called School Mentors, where I have about 100,000 followers, uh, 40 million views, and uh, 3.6 million likes on my platform. And I've, from there, built uh, ed education technology businesses on top of it, trying to provide students with the tool necessary to be able to find their dreams, pursue their careers, and leverage their education to, to get closer to that. And I'm here to, to talk to you about, about artificial intelligence because I am one, uh, the project leader of AI Gen. AI Gen is a youth forum under AI Forum, which I had, um, we got introduced to earlier. And AI Gen is all about empowering youth to be able to pursue artificial intelligence at their own pace, regardless of what that is. And let's see why students care about actually pursuing um, artificial intelligence. Well, first of all, it, it pays well. Uh, we see that in the US in 2019, uh, four out of the top five paying jobs in the US were around data science and artificial intelligence, apart from being an agile coach, which is management, which is, as we've heard, he also covered at Universal AI University. And it's quite interesting to see the shift, this attention shift and this demand, because we see that it's useful. We see that it's needed and we see there's a, there's a talent gap 
is that uh, we, we recognize this and it's incredibly important to address because without the proper talent, we're wasting time and it, time we don't have much of it, unfortunately. The second reason, well, this was the abstract of the OpenAI paper, which you might have read from March, which stated that uh, I've highlighted around 80% of the U.S. workforce could have at least 10% of the work tasks affected by the introduction of, introduction of LLMs, while approximately 19%, one-fifth, may see at least 50% of their tasks impacted. This is really incredibly important to understand. The amount of societal uh, change that's about to happen because of this is tremendous. We need to understand this, especially if, if we have students that want to go into the financial sector or in STEM. Because if you look at the report, those are the ones that are mostly affected. It's not people that are chopping wood. They're going to get affected by artificial intelligence, be able to categorize tasks or analyze data. These are the, the mathematicians, the physicists, the psychologists, the uh, analysts, the data analysts, and the engineers, as well as the consultants. And this is really incredibly uh, important to notice. Because if the, if the students don't understand artificial intelligence and how to utilize it to their benefits, they're not going to get replaced by an AI agent anytime soon, but they might get replaced by someone else who understood AI and understood that they can utilize it to be even more productive. And obviously, one of the most expensive things about driving a uh, business is, well, talent, your, your salaries. Uh, this is incredibly, uh, you, can't, you can't push this enough. This, Students have, have to understand that they need to understand this to be able to future-proof themselves. And the last point is, we see an incredible, incredible focus from young people today to want to be a part of this change. When you ask people, what do you care about? I want to make a change. I want to make an impact. I want to make sure that I can help the world or, or make a legacy. Well, many of these people also care about sustainable development. Uh, we're talking environment, we're talking also economic growth in the countries, equality. And as you can see, the introduction of artificial intelligence is vastly more positive than it is negative. And this is really important for the students to understand as well, because negativity and fear paralyzes you from driving change. And I believe uh, it is all of our duty to really ensure our students that there's a tremendous opportunity to be able to be applied if we do the actions and we actually carefully and thoughtfully implement artificial intelligence meaningfully, you know, with data privacy and we have to take um, uh, ethical standards in terms of how we implement our tools and technology. But there, are, there is positive change that we can make here. Although I am mostly positive, there are some negative aspects we have to consider as well. And I would like to highlight them because uh, there are three major ones that uh, this meta study showcased. And it's uh, for a sustainable, uh, sustainable Development Goal 1, 4, and 10. If you don't know which ones those are, 1 is poverty, 4 is education, and 10 is inequality. You can go into the study, it's, it's tiny text here in the bottom, but I can send it out if anyone is interested. But the incredible thing to understand is, well, for, for poverty line, we have to understand the type of data we collect and how we utilize our models when we're trying to make, uh, for example, we can take language models for one. If you're not collecting the uh, proper amount of data for maybe smaller local dialects, this can be particularly true in India then you're actually excluding people from having the ability to properly translate and communicate their ideas and thoughts and aspirations, which would exclude, exclude them from a more global uh, uh, platform to communicate. Number four is quite obvious as well when it's, you know, education. If you don't have the tools to be able to, uh, to learn, to get inspired, to develop, well, you're going to be left behind. We know that school and education is one of the most important institutions in our society because it really drives change socioeconomically for for the people involved so uh, you have to you have to take them into consideration and and the last one about inequality this is not just uh, in fact there's a there's a different 
point for inequality between between uh, sexes, but this one is more actually between people and countries. And if certain countries are being left behind, well, you're not grabbing the opportunities that the other uh, uh, countries are. And I, I think that India has one of the best potentials of actually actually utilizing the ginormous talent pool that, that exists in the country. And we see that every type of technological evolution that happens, the youth are always the quickest to catch on. Which means that really what you have is this, this potential for extreme change because if you can if you can grab a hold of all the potential talent that exists in country the more people you have that actually understand the issue the, the better you can you, you can utilize them and you can provide that talent to the world and see the you know reap the benefits of being able to provide for society so i think actually although these are uh, some of the biggest negative impacts you can actually if you look at the positive these are also the biggest strengths that's incredible to me. And I really think we should all remember these when we're talking to our students. And it is our duty to remind them that they have the opportunity to turn some of our greatest fears and potential dangers into our biggest benefit for humanity. This is not a small task, but it's incredibly, incredibly important. Uh, and uh, we ought to, to, to keep this at the front of our mind. So what does AI Gen mean? Uh, AI Gen stands for AI Generation. Our organization truly believes that the easiest way to implement artificial intelligence on a large scale is to start with the people that intuitively will get it first and then work our way up. So this is why we focus on Generation Z and Generation Alpha, the people who love the Gen Z, uh, so the kids, the students. And to us, it means three things, and I wanted to walk them through them with you today. First thing is fun. We believe that artificial intelligence should be fun, because when it's fun, it's done not just because I have to, it's done because I want to, and it's, it goes beyond what happens in the classrooms. It's that kind of class that doesn't stop, even, even though you've been given you know, your classic curriculum and your classic experiences through your university or school, you can't get enough of it, almost as addictive as, well, social media. <laughs> social media can be fun, and it's also addictive, and we believe that the uh, artificial intelligence should be the same way, which is why we also believe that it's incredibly important to exist on the digital platforms where students spend most of their time having fun and try to grab as much market share out of people's attention to something that's actually enjoyable but still beneficial for the students. Because really, that's, if they, that's where they exist, that's where we should be. And it's very true when we have this important message, such as this uh, uh, global mission we have. The second thing is, it should be exciting. This is mostly, well, we've defined it as having or showing a heightened state of energy, enthusiasm, or eagerness. I think this is mostly for many, uh, driven towards their ambitions, aspirations, and potential career developments. And it's, it's important for people to understand, and I pushed this a lot in the beginning, but that artificial intelligence will be enabling a lot of people to do a lot of exciting things. And I think that it will come to a lot of benefit if people get that, ah, okay, this will actually truly help me in, in a disproportionate way that I can't really grasp at the moment. And I think uh, we're trying to make that happen through, well, I go back through, those, through our social media, through our communication. And I think it's incredibly important that this happens in the classrooms as well. It's, it's easy to forget when you're always in it. And this is especially true for uh, potentially a U.S. university where you're constantly seeing your students and the students are constantly in the thick of things to sometimes zoom out and understand the big pictures so they don't forget. Because if they forget... The, you, you lose the excitement, really, I think. Um, and last thing is educational. This might go without saying, but the students have to learn. Uh, they have to learn, and it's not just they, uh, they have to, but they should, because it's empowering. It, it helps. It's a tool. It's a tool you can't take away from them. And what's interesting, we've defined education is a purposeful activity directed at achieving certain aims such as transmitting knowledge or fostering skills and character traits. Because we believe that the, the traits that are really needed for 
the future of AI is, is not just about being able to code or being able to collect rep, uh, representable data. It is also about the implementation, uh, the systems you build around it, and the decisions you make based on maybe the outputs you get from certain tools. Because at the end of the day, we're the humans in the center of things. And I think we should ought to make responsible decisions based on the feedback we get from, from the systems.